She's charming and a little flighty, but Luna Lovegood is one of the best characters in Harry Potter. You might think she's just a weird Ravenclaw, but here are 10 things everyone gets wrong about Luna Lovegood. It's a charm, actually. Keeps away the narbles. Luna Lovegood is first introduced in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Harry can see the Thestrals for the first time, and she tells him that he is just as sane as she is. It was at that moment that we fell in love with this quirky Ravenclaw. Luna Lovegood is in the same year as Ginny Weasley. Her peers call her Looney Lovegood, and she doesn't really have friends. Throughout the course of the fifth book, she becomes one of Harry's closest friends. She even fights with him at the Department of Mysteries. Some terrible things happen to Luna in the series, but she is always so positive. To most people, she seems a little crazy, but there is a lot more to Luna than meets the eye. She's more than book smart. Ravenclaw has a reputation for being full of nerdy, book-smart kids, but there is a lot more to being wise and intelligent than just studying all the time. Luna knows there is a lot more to life than just making good grades. She values knowledge in all its forms. Ravenclaw is also the house of creativity. That's a whole different form of intelligence. Luna is very creative. Is it true you can produce a Patronus charm? In the Deathly Hallows, Harry, Ron, and Hermione visit the Lovegood house, although Luna isn't there because she's imprisoned at Malfoy Manor. We find out quite a bit about her. Harry describes seeing a mural painted of himself, Ron, Hermione, Neville, and Ginny. He describes her painting abilities as magical, even though the pictures don't move. Luna is super artistic. She is also full of emotional intelligence. She knows exactly what to say to people when they are hurting. She comforts Harry many times. She tells him that he will see Sirius again. Sirius. <laughs> and she recognizes people by more than just their appearance. At Bill and Fleur's wedding, Harry is under Polyjuice Potion, so that no one will recognize him. But the disguise doesn't fool Luna at all. That's some serious talent. She believes in equality. Luna Lovegood is a pureblood. Not all purebloods are bad. The Weasleys and the Shacklebolts are amazing people. Dumbledore's got style. But there are certain beliefs that all purebloods have. Even though the Weasleys can't afford a house elf, they still see the creatures as lesser than wizards. They just accept that house elves are meant to take orders. Dobby is a free elf, and Dobby has come to save Harry Potter. They are also rather cruel to the gnomes that live in their yard, but Luna does not see the world this way. Not only does she reject the idea of blood purity, she sees all creatures as worthy of respect. In Deathly Hallows, Dobby rescues Luna and the others from the dungeon at Malfoy Manor. She treats him with total respect. She even calls him Sir. Dobby liked that very much. Even though Hermione advocates for house elf rights, she still talks down to the elves as if they are children. But Luna doesn't treat Dobby like that at all. She is always kind to Hagrid even though he is half giant. She can't even imagine treating creatures as less than her equal. She's the real champion of equality in the story. She's the best Quidditch announcer. For the first five books, the Gryffindor, Lee Jordan, announces all the Hogwarts Quidditch matches. He's pretty hilarious, but he's really not a great announcer when you think about it. He is too biased. He talks trash about the opposing teams and players. He's accusing them of cheating. And he is always getting in trouble by McGonagall for what he says. We can't believe he lasted a full five years with that job. After Lee leaves Hogwarts, there has to be a new announcer. And Luna takes over at that point. Luna is great because even though she gets sidetracked, she is truly neutral. Now she does call out Smith for being rude, but she also says exactly what is going on in the game. We don't know if she just doesn't care enough about Quidditch to be biased, or if she is just really good at hiding her team's spirit. Either way, she announces a much more unbiased game than Lee Jordan ever did. Also, her father runs a magazine. She definitely has some experience with reporting. We hope she continued to announce for the games when she went back to Hogwarts. It would be hard to find a neutral announcer when all the kids are in separate houses. She makes a great date. Oh, Slughorn. The potions master in the sixth book is one strange fellow. He plays favorites with his students. He invites the kids he thinks are special to his slug club. Which is perfect. So perfect, I dare say one drop would kill us all. Harry really doesn't want to go to Slughorn's special Christmas party, but lots of people want to go with him as his date. He just isn't interested in anyone but Ginny, so he invites Luna along as a friend. He doesn't care that being seen with Looney Lovegood might make people gossip. 
He just genuinely likes her. In fact, he thinks she is cool. And she was a great date. When Harry invites her, one of his eyebrows is a different color from a magical accident. She asks if Harry wants her to change her eyebrow color too. What a great date! She made friends with a vampire at this party. She wasn't even scared. Also, Harry was feeling pretty bummed when Snape implied he would make a bad Aurora. She changed the subject to a conspiracy theory. Luna made Harry laugh so hard that his drink came out of his nose. She knew exactly how to make him feel better. Anyone that ever got a chance to date Luna was a lucky person. She knows what people think but doesn't care. This is one of Luna's best traits. Luna knows that people think she is odd. She knows that she doesn't have friends. And Half-Blood Prince, Ramilda Vane, asks Harry to sit with her on the train. She is super rude to Luna and Neville, who are considered uncool. Harry refuses. Luna tells him that people expect Harry to hang out with cool people. She knows very well that she isn't one of them. But she never tries to fit in. She is just herself. She puts up with Ravenclaws hiding her belongings all year every year. She hears people call her loony, but she just keeps on being herself. She knows that once she gets friends who accept her as she is, those friends are the ones worth keeping. She marches to the beat of her own drum, but she is always positive. It's always good to be yourself and not care what other people think, but it's so hard. That's why Luna is such a great role model. We should all try to have the confidence that Luna does. She knows who she is and owns it. Work it, girl. Luna is basically Snape. Luna's quirkiness leads us to our next point. Luna is basically Snape. Okay, we know what you're thinking. They are totally opposites. Snape is mean, but hear us out. There are many parallels between Luna and Snape, as well as several other characters. Harry is often compared to his father, James. James had three best friends. The goofy best friend was Sirius, who was similar to Ron. His brainiac friend was Remus Lupin. Remus was really good at school, just like Hermione. Peter Pettigrew is an outcast with way cooler friends, just like Neville Longbottom. Lily was the fiery red-headed love interest. She is a lot like Ginny Weasley. And Snape was the kid in another house who was bullied. But the original group didn't deal with things well. James and Sirius were bullies. Peter was a coward who joined Voldemort. And Snape chose to be cruel because of his bullying. Harry and his friends represent the better qualities of his parents and their friends. He is kind to most people and doesn't pick on people. Neville is actually very brave and has a great heart. And Luna is what Snape could have been if he chose kindness, or if James had been kinder to him. Luna always chooses kindness. Snape chooses bitterness. She is strong. At first, you might think that Luna is just a quiet, passive girl who lets people walk all over her. And sure, she does put up with a lot of bullying, but Luna Lovegood is one strong young woman. It's obvious, isn't it? We have to talk to someone who's dead. First of all, she has dealt with some major trauma in her past. When she was just nine years old, her mother passed away, and Luna was there when it happened. She acknowledges that it makes her sad, but she has become a very skilled witch despite losing her mother so young. Also, she doesn't just sit back and let things happen when it matters. She signed up for Dumbledore's army because she knew that Umbridge was a terrible teacher. She wanted to learn how to defend herself. And let's not forget how she finally stood up for herself in the last movie. Harry is ignoring her when she is trying to help him figure out the last Horcrux. In a moment that truly seems out of character, she yells at him to stop and listen to her. He is so shocked that he does exactly what she says. Luna doesn't always stand up for herself, but when it's important, she will. And people listen. She was crucial to defeating Voldemort. Voldemort had hidden six pieces of his soul in important objects. The Deathly Hallows was all about Harry's journey to find these objects and destroy them. That way, when he finally faced down Voldemort, the evil wizard would be mortal. Harry figured out all the horcruxes that Voldemort made, except for one. He knew it was something important to Ravenclaw. Even Hermione couldn't figure it out. And she had read Hogwarts a history many times, so Harry asked his Ravenclaw friend. Luna tells him about the lost diadem of Ravenclaw. Another Ravenclaw brushes it off as a legend. It's lost after all, but Luna knows better. She helps Harry gain an audience with the Grey Lady, the ghost of Ravenclaw's daughter. Luna immediately knew what the Horcrux had to be. She shows him a replica of it, and it was because of her kindness and friendship with the Grey Lady that Harry was able to get the information he needed. Without Luna's help, there would have been one Horcrux left after the battle. Then Voldemort would rise to power again, and we'd have the same story all over again. Everyone should be thanking Luna for her very important role in defeating the darkest wizard ever. She is super brave. 
Luna might be a Ravenclaw, but she has as much bravery as any Gryffindor. Let's think back to the end of Order of the Phoenix. She goes with Harry and the others to the Ministry of Magic to find the prophecy. Luna is not the type of person to take unnecessary risks, but she knows this is important and dangerous. She goes to help her friends. She is only a four-year student, and she fights off Death Eaters. In the Deathly Hallows, Luna is kidnapped by Death Eaters. She is imprisoned in Malfoy Manor with Ollivander. She has been there for months, and she is probably in terrible shape by the time she is rescued. She had been through a lot. No one would blame her if she wanted to stay at Shell Cottage. She wasn't even legally an adult. But Luna was too brave to do that. She went with the others back to Hogwarts to fight in the battle. She helped Harry cast his Patronus to fight off a horde of Dementors when he couldn't think of a happy thought. She fought against Death Eaters. She was even one of the three girls fighting Bellatrix Lestrange before Molly Weasley finished her off. Luna Lovegood is a lot of things, and Brave is definitely one of them. Luna is the best friend ever. Harry Potter had a lot of great friends, but he was lucky to end up with Luna Lovegood on his friends list. We should all have a friend like Luna. There were several times when Luna comforted Harry when no one else could. After Sirius went through the veil, she talked to him frankly about death and reassured him. She spoke at Dobby's funeral when everyone else was too overcome by grief to do it. When Harry thought he was going crazy because he could see Thestrals, Luna reassured him. Even though she was in a different house, she went all decked out in support of her friend's Quidditch team. She even made that crazy lion hat that roared to support the Gryffindors. She told Harry to remember that they are all still alive and still fighting when he lost hope during the Battle of Hogwarts. And after the battle, Luna knew exactly what he needed. Harry was exhausted, but he was now the savior of the wizarding world. She knew he needed peace and quiet, so she distracted everyone and told Harry to slip away under his invisibility cloak. We could use more people like Luna Lovegood in the world. What is your favorite thing about Luna? Let us know in the comment section. That's it for the 10 things that everyone gets wrong about Luna Lovegood. Get those rack spurts out of your head and subscribe to get more magical videos.